What's up guys, Artemio Main Analysis here, going to be talking about Bellator 283, Lima vs Jackson taking place this Friday night, it's going to be on during the day, Saturday for me, so I'm pretty much uh, very well looking forward to this card, and it's going to be a pretty good one, I feel like there's quite a few really good prospects on this one, once again with Bellator, uh, I'm, I'm getting into Bellator guys, because uh, they don't actually broadcast to New Zealand, I know a lot of the time you can watch a lot of the fights on YouTube, but they don't actually broadcast their YouTube to New Zealand, so I kind of just watch uh, Bellator on like, on like some sort of streaming website or whatever. Um, don't tell Scott Coker I said that, but it's the only way I can watch it in New Zealand, man. Like, what else am I supposed to do? But uh, anyway, let's just move on into the card. Uh, as usual, though, with Bellator, it's, it's pretty hard to make really good picks, like really good underdog picks, because so many of these car uh, fights, man, like look at the topology votes, you know? So many of these fights, are, it's pretty obvious like who you reckon the winner is going to be, you know what I mean? Hopefully I didn't waste too much time with my intro. One minute intro, way too long, I'm really sorry for making you guys wait for that. Ethan, Hugh, Ethan Hughes versus Kevin Hand. I'm going with Ethan Hughes, he's had an amateur background. Uh, Kevin Hand has had two uh, MMA fights as a pro. He's, he's beaten both guys uh, by KO. And they were both 0-1, so he hasn't really fought like anyone super good. But Ethan Hughes here, man, he had a five-fight five, uh, five fight amateur run where he won every single fight. And he's undefeated as a pro, so I feel like maybe as a guy that's only 20 years old, this is one of those guys that um, Bellator is really going to try and build up. And I think that Ethan Hughes potentially could be someone that uh, Bellator looks to uh, keep padding the record, you know, keep putting up against easy competition. I think he should win this one here. Don't bet it, though, because it's a 3-0 and guy versus a 2-0 and guy. I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet that fight in my opinion anyway. Now, Kaikamaka the Third taking place uh, against Akhmed Magomedov. Kaikamaka the Third, former UFC fighter, got cut or, or released uh, as such off of some very weird decisions, you know, like a, like a draw to Danny Chavez, a split decision, a uh, loss to TJ Brown, which a lot of people think he won. And then, um, yeah, obviously lost to Jonathan Pierce. But uh, he come back, he beat John D. G. Jesus. I don't know if you guys can see my dog in, in the background, sorry. Uh, he beat John De Jesus, but then he lost a split decision to Justin Gonzalez, and I believe that fight was in Hawaii. But um, yeah, Kaikamaka the third, uh, a lot of people like to fade him. Maybe Akhmed Magomedov could be, could be like not that great as an 8-0 fighter, but this is a tough test for uh, for him, uh, you know, fighting a former UFC fighter. If he beats Kaikamaka the third, he could be a pretty legit uh, prospect for Bellator, so give me Kaikamaka the third to win. No, 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 give me Ma Magomedov to win. But I'm so weary of this fight. I'm not super confident on it. I like Kaikamaka the third. I want him to win. But I've got to pick Akhmed Magomedov here. Now, Roman Ferraldo versus Luis Inaguiz. I'm picking Roman Ferraldo. He's clearly a guy that the UFC, uh, sorry, Bellator is really trying to look into. As he's a 7-0 prospect. He's 29 years old. He's fighting Luis Inaguiz, who is 5-1, 36 years old. You know, he's, he's pretty good, though. Like, he's got some really good wins on his record. He beat a guy that was 7-2 and two in his last one. And he's got another good one there, the 3-0 win, but that was about three years ago. But Luis Inaguiz, he's 36 years old. I feel like he's been brought in to lose to Roman, who, uh, I mean, he's been on a pretty good run, but against, like, you know, not the greatest uh, competition in the world, you know. Even that, that Pat Casey wins pretty good, though, uh, to be fair, when he was probably only, like, 3-0, 2-0. But, um, yeah, Roman Ferraldo, give me him by KO. I think he should win this fight inside the distance. Hello. And uh, the next one, we've got Jalon Bates versus Mark Coates. I feel like this is just another one of uh, Jalon Bates uh, being brought up, being built up. You know, he fought a couple of a uh, couple of months ago, and I think I, I I think I covered this card for Bellator, and I picked him to beat uh, Chris Dessanel. You know what I mean? And uh, he's just kind of been built up against uh, prospects. Uh, sorry, as a prospect against guys that uh, he's 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 probably gonna beat. You know, he's fighting Mark Coates. Three fight losing streak to competition that just isn't as good as um, Jalen Bates is, in my opinion. So I feel like Jalen Bates is going to beat Mark Coates. He's going to win this fight by submission because that's what he does. I think he's on a pretty good submission streak. He is four fight submission streak. Give me Jalen Bates to win this fight here inside the distance. Bobby King, I'm so mad. I'm so I'm so mad at you, Bobby King. Honestly. <laughs> okay, so Bobby King. Uh, God damn it, Bobby. He wins fights he's not meant to, you know what I mean? I, I, he, he beat, I think I, I picked him to beat uh, Keone Diggs, I can't really remember now. But um, like he beat Aviv Ghazali, he wasn't meant to beat Aviv Ghazali, you know what I mean? And like that just ruined like such a good young prospect, man, he's 21 years old. And Bobby King decides, nah man, like <laughs> I'm going to take that, oh, <laughs> god damn it, Bobby King. 
Oh, I'm going to pick Gadzi Rabobonov. He's a lot more experienced by like seven fights. You know what I mean? He beat JJ Wilson. I picked JJ Wilson to win that one coming up a weight class and uh, he didn't win, man. Damn it, JJ. Like, he was um, New Zealand's great hope in Bellator. Couldn't get it done, but that's all right, man. Um, still supporting you, JJ Wilson. Give me Gadzi Rabobonov to, to beat uh, Bobby King, but... Bobby King, man, he, he wins fights he's not meant to, you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't meant to beat Aviv Ghazali. I don't think he was meant to beat Nick Newell. Like, he just he just brought in, and he just comes in and just beats guys he's not meant to beat. So maybe he beats Gudzi, but I'm picking Gudzi to win this one, yeah. Now, um, Vita Atiaga fighting Vanessa Porto. Vanessa Porto's been in there with a lot of a pretty decent competition, you know what I mean? Like, you look at... Um, oh my god, that's, that is a very strange haircut, not gonna lie. Um, well, it just looks weird from that angle, but, uh, anyway, um, Vanessa Porto, she's been in there with, uh, some really good, uh, competition, she's been in there with Roxanne Modafferi, she's been in there with Chris Cyborg, who else has she been in there, Amanda Nunes, <laughs> um, you know what, I mean, Bal Ponchank, I believe, ended up in the UFC at some point, she'd be, Jennifer Maya, okay, like, let's keep, keep the name going, you know what I mean, Liz Carmouche, uh, very recently, Vanessa Porto's been in there with some of the best fighters in the world, a lot of UFC fighters, a lot of Bellator fighters, and uh, she just never really made it into the UFC or, like, a major promotion, I'm not too sure why that is, I'm pretty sure there probably is a pr pretty decent reason, but I think that Porto should, should beat a 6-4 and four Arteaga, you know what I mean, so, uh, yeah, give me give me um, Vanessa Porto to win this one here. Ramiro Cotton versus Dalton Rosa. The difference between these two guys' records is Ramiro Cotton's record, 6-0 record, just ain't the same as Dalton Rosa's. I like Ramiro Cotton. Like, I do think he's a really good fighter, and I do kind of want to pick him, but he's just the, the old um, classic American kickboxing academy, Bellator crossover pad the record as much as we can uh, sort of situation here um, Dolson Rosa though, this is what I was looking at is the amateur record, he's got a win over Cody Brundage on the amateur scene, who's in the UFC now, went 7-0 as an amateur he's gone 6-0 and as a pro so far, fighting um, you now he's fighting Ramiro Cotton, who's a really good wrestler really good wrestler, but Dolson Rosa's good too and he's just fought much higher level um, competition, you know, like he beat Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who uh, also aside from MMA is like a really famous actor, I think he's been in a few like major movies, like the new Jumanji movies, kind of comes uh, um, comes to mind, and uh, he's, yeah, I can't even think of any more, but he, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's been in a lot of very, very um, awesome movies, and he, he beat Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he beat Tony Johnson, who's Dwayne Johnson's younger brother, so um, yeah, the, <laughs> the Johnson brothers, the Johnson family hates Dalton Rosa, but um, no, he's been in there with some really good guys too, Ty Road is a pretty good fighter too, but before that obviously he was building his record up, but that's what you do when you're just getting into the game, but once you're in the game for a while, that's when you start fighting good guys, and Romero Cotton, you know, he has been fighting, okay, I lied, um, he hasn't been fighting that great guys like Justin Sumter, really isn't anything too special, uh, in my opinion, give me, give me uh, Rosta to win, Dalton Rosta, Dalton Rosta, um, yeah, the guy that, um, yeah, poor Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne Johnson must hate this guy, uh, give me Dalton Rosa to win a, probably a decision, both guys don't really tend to, to get finishes, which is, which is, uh, interesting at 185, but it is what it is, now, Davion Franklin versus Marcelo Golm, I'm gonna go with Davion Franklin, once again, it's the guy that the Bellator is really trying to build up, um, quite a bit, and he's six foot three at, uh, 185, which is quite good, um, yeah, and the thing is with uh, with him is, like, he's been brought in and he's been fighting really good guys since the start. You know, he beat Everett Cummins, who may have the most padded uh, record of all time. You know, he was an underdog against a 3-0 and Davion Franklin, which is absolutely insane, uh, in my opinion. 21 seconds, he got knocked out, and, uh, which is pretty crazy, man. But, um, yeah, just really padded record uh, coming into it, you know what I mean? Really, really beat only um, losing records. But, like, man, like, how was he an underdog in that fight, actually? It's kind of weird. Um, yeah, dude, was 15-0 with a 5-0 and amateur record. Damn. Anyway, Davion Franklin, obviously something special. I think he's going to knock out Marcelo Golm. You know, he uh, he was in the UFC before. But, uh, and it, actually, Soke Pavlovich, I was going to say Soke Pavlovich did finish him. I mean, he's come back since um, against Billy Swanson. But, yeah, I think Davion Franklin's a special prospect. I think he's going to get the KO. In my opinion, Lorenz Market Larkin versus Mohamed Brakamov. I feel like this is the most, this is the closest fight on the entire card, in my opinion here. And I really do want to pick Larkin. I really do want to pick the underdog. I don't think I've picked an underdog yet, but I don't think there's really 
much opportunity for an underdog so far. I think maybe if you wanted to pick a, an underdog, you're going to pick Lorenz Larkin. He's almost 36 years old, but he beat Kyle Stewart inside the distance. He beat Rafael Cavalho. Um, who else did he beat? Andrei Kurushkov is a really good one too. I feel like he's beaten... Uh, there's someone else I'm trying to think of on his record that's a very notable win. So we just run through... Or is it? Neil Magny, that's the one. He was in the UFC and he beat Neil Magny, Jorge Masvidal, Santiago Ponzinibbio. I mean, John Howard as well, he's still doing it <laughs> um, in 2022, which is pretty crazy. Like, he had an up and down UFC run, come into the Bellas War, lost a couple of times, but now he's gone on a really good one run since then. Now, Mohamed Bakamov, uh, coming out of ACA, ACB, and uh, he's been in there with some good guys. He's been in there with Jesse Taylor, who was on the Ultimate Fighter a few years ago, but this guy just doesn't fight often at all, which is... So strange to me, you know what I mean? I don't really like that out come off. At least um, Lorenz Larkin is fighting somewhat often, you know what I mean? But, oh, give me Brokamov. Give me Brokamov. Not that confident. I mean, from here, I'm just picking all favourites, in my opinion. You know, I'm going to be going with Usman Nurmagomedov. I mean, he's pulling the Khabib trick. He's really padding his record. You know what I mean? Like, just not as padded as Khabib's was, in my opinion, but he's still padding it up, he's only 24 years old, so I guess he can get away with it, but uh, Chris Gonzalez ain't that bad, like he lost to Goichi Yamauchi, who's a really good fight, and I really want Goichi to be in the UFC, man, come on Goichi, <laughs> anyway, yeah, like he's he's good, um, he's good, but he's not as good as Usman to make him head off, give me Usman, uh, inside the distance, now, uh, Sydney Outlaw versus Tufik Musayev. I think maybe this is an underdog pick. I'm picking Tufik Musayev. I don't know if this is an underdog pick at all, but both of these guys, I think, are taking the fight on somewhat short notice because Sydney Outlaw was meant to fight someone else. Tufik Musayev was meant to fight Adam Piccolotti. And, um, yeah, I think both of those fights fell out, so they decided to put this together. Tufik Musayev has been uh, meaning to make his Bellator debut for a very long time now. Um, he was 18 and 4, but they recently found the guys that are really checking on the records to make sure that they're actually legit. Found another win over this guy, Murat uh, Kokaturk, in, in the Turkey regional scene. So, yeah, he's he's added another win to his record. He's actually 19 and 4. He did recently lose uh, inside the <laughs> inside like one minute. But, um, yeah, all of his w fights have been uh, falling out for Bellator, but he's finally getting one against Sydney Outlaw, who's a really good fighter. Uh, been in there with some really good guys. I mean, he won on um, won on uh, Dana White's Contender Series, but didn't get signed to the UFC. Got signed to Bellator instead. Lost to Michael Chandler, and one of Michael Chandler's last fights with Bellator. And uh, since then, you know, he's gone on a pretty good run. I think Miles Jerry is a former UFC fighter as well, if I'm not um, too mistaken. In fact, yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is to Tafik Musayev. I think he's a pretty good prospect. I mean, he's got to win over uh, Douglas Lima. Well, if a tricky. Oh my god, guys, I'm so such an idiot. He's got to win over Patricky Pitbull, who I believe was a, is a former champion. I don't think he's the champion at the moment. I think it's someone else. Um, but he was a former champion only only like last year, I think, for Bellator. As I said, guys, I'm from New Zealand, but like, I don't really follow Bellator too much. I'm trying to get into it. I'm trying to make videos about it too. And uh, so I can get into Bellator, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I like Bellator. I feel like Bellator definitely got the opportunity to, um, to become like a bigger promotion because a lot of UFC is getting a lot of hate right now I don't see Bellator getting a lot of hate so I feel like maybe there is an opportunity for Bellator to catch up to the monopoly that is UFC but Jason Jackson versus Douglas Lima Jason Jackson decision is my pick um that yeah, he's probably a favorite if, if, if the odds are picking him Douglas Lima you know what I mean former champion former welterweight champion uh beat Roy McDonald um who was that that one hasn't aged very well he is he did knock out Michael Page as well but um yeah, big, uh, sorry, lost to Gegard Musasi when he moved up to 185 to, to try and get double champ status. And unfortunately, that didn't quite work out for him. Then he lost to Yaroslav Amosov, who's a crazy fighter right now. A crazy good fighter. I mean, sorry, he's at 26 and I don't think he's fought since then because he is in Ukraine uh, fighting for them. So that's uh, very respectable in my opinion. But then he lost to Michael Page by split decision. He's fighting Jason Jackson, who's really got a, a decent wrestling base so that's kind of all he really uses he, he's a decision winner he don't think he's got to finish in a very long time i don't think he's going to finish douglas lima i think he's going to push douglas lima against the cage get a takedown and then do not a lot with it and then uh win like that i don't think it's going to be the most exciting main event in the world but yeah give me jason jackson a winner decision and uh maybe this is a title eliminator win for jason jackson i'm not too sure who the oh yeah there is a sorry i'm an idiot 
Um, I think he'll probably fight Amosov when Amosov comes back if he wins this fight. So yeah, give me Jason Jackson to win this one. Not the most exciting main event in the world, but hopefully you guys didn't mind that video. Hopefully it's not too long. 14 and a half minutes ain't that bad. So yeah, man, uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Uh, if you like the video, please like, and if you want to see more, please subscribe. I've got so much good content coming out soon. Tomorrow I'm doing my UFC full card breakdown because I've done my research for that already, but I thought, you know what, I'll do the Bellator, I'll break it up a little bit. And then Dana White's Contender Series after that. I'm so excited for Dana White's Contender Series um, this year. As always, I do writing for We Want Picks. And my Instagram is artem.mma.analysis. I'm trying to build up a bit of a following on there. I think I recently passed 1,000 followers on there. So it's pretty awesome. And uh, as always, BetUS, 125% sign-up bonus above. And I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys very much uh, for, for watching.